Welcome to Unit 3. In this unit, you're going to learn about prototypes in JavaScript. Prototypes is a concept in JavaScript which lets you build objects using a template or a blueprint. A lot of object-oriented programming languages have a concept of using a blueprint to create objects, and uh, the way you create this blueprint is by using what's called classes. You create a class which forms that blueprint or which forms that template, and then you create objects out of them. But JavaScript does not have the concept of classes. What it does have is the prototype concept, and you can use the concept of prototypes to build some kind of a blueprint or some kind of a template which influences objects. It's not exactly equivalent to classes because you don't create instances of a prototype. However, you can create behaviors that affect multiple objects by using prototypes. If that does not make sense, don't worry about it. You're gonna look at prototypes and we'll see how that lets you build objects in this manner. So for a lot of people familiar with the class-based object-oriented programming languages like Java or C++, uh, objects are kind of synonymous with class instances for people who have been working with those languages. You think of an object as an instance of a class and you, the only way to create an object is by saying that you want it to be an instance of a particular class. You don't just create an object out of thin air. It has to be of a specific class. And now that you've seen how objects work in JavaScript, you know that that's not the case. You can just create objects out of thin air. It's not class-based in JavaScript. So the traditional model of having methods of classes, it doesn't apply in JavaScript. In the case of JavaScript, there are no methods of objects as such. Object just has properties. And the property could be uh, another object. It could be a primitive type or it could be a function. So if the property is a function, then it somehow looks like it's a method of an object, but it's not quite. Let's take this example of the bicycle class that we've looked in the previous unit. I am creating this using a constructor and I have a new instance of this object assigned to the variable bicycle1. Now this object that gets assigned to bicycle1 is gonna have a bunch of properties on it. It's gonna have a property called cadence, a property called speed, gear, tire pressure, and a property called inflate tires. These properties, which are primitives, should be obvious. They are properties of this object which happen to contain a primitive value. But let's take a look at this function now. What happens when a constructor is called is that this function executes, and one of the things that this function does is, apart from assigning all these other properties, it assigns a property which is this inline function. So this inline function expression basically causes the interpreter to create a function object and then create a property called inflate tires and assign the reference of that function to inflate tires property. The reason why it's important to remember this is that this function, the inline uh, function expression that was written over here, essentially causes a new function to be created every time this constructor is called, right? There's a new function object that gets created. And every bicycle that gets up uh, gets created in every instance of this object that gets created, as a result of calling this constructor, creates a new copy of this function object, all right? So if I were to make a copy of this, and I call this bicycle2, now bicycle1 has a function object that was created when this function expression was called. A bicycle2 has another function object that was created when this function expression was called. So you're basically creating copies of it. Now imagine you're building like an employee management system where you have like a thousand employees. Each function of this employee object would get duplicated. It would be that many copies, right? So this is different from the class-based way of thinking about this. In a traditional class-based model, in order to create an object, what you would first need to do is create a class. Now the class has the definition of the object, right? It's the blueprint. It has all the all, you know, the member variables as well as the methods that the class needs to contain. And now when you create objects based on the class, the object kind of owns those methods. So the object knows what those methods are because it is associated with the class. So there is one copy of the methods but then every object is kind of a being, you know, it's able to refer to that existing copy. So this is different from constructor functions that we've just seen, where each object gets a copy. This is wasteful, and there should be a better way to do this in JavaScript. And it turns out there is. It's just not classes. There are no concept of classes in JavaScript. Uh, there is a way to have this method or the behavior of objects defined in one place and have it kind of inherited. Uh, again, 
forget what you've known about classes and object inheritance and all those things. In JavaScript, it's a little bit different, even though we happen to use some of the same terminologies. I encourage you to look at the next few tutorials with an open mind to kind of understand how JavaScript does this.